subjective, it's subjective, it's explicitly grounded in the attitudes of a person. That's what subjective morality is. And I don't know of any good argument for why, if God doesn't exist, you couldn't have objective morals. I don't know what the connection is there. But I haven't said anything at all yet about how objective moral values do exist without God. So that brings me to the first part of my title, The Science of Morality. And to explain how I think about this, uh, you know, again, the problem is, in a world of just quarks and electrons <coughs> bouncing around, how could anything be really right or really wrong? It's just quarks and electrons bouncing around. And the way I want to uh, talk about this is with an illustration, a story. Uh, because I think when we talk about morality, our words are really confusing us and tripping us up. And I think that will become clear if we look at it from another uh, venue, another <coughs> subject matter. Um, so I want to tell a story, but I need somebody uh, to be in the story with me. Um, you with the red hair. Will you be in the story with me? I would love to. Excellent. What's your name? And actually, you can just stay right there, um, but I, you're going to be part of my story. <coughs> What's your name? Kristen. Kristen. Everybody say hello to Kristen. Hi. So Kristen's in my story. Here's the story. Kristen and I are on a date. And she can't do anything about it because I'm telling the story. <laughs> and uh, I'm a sophisticated guy, so I take us to an art museum. And we're looking at paintings, and we're looking at sculptures, and really building up the mood. And then we go to the, one of those weird media installations with video cameras and TVs and weird jazz music, and that really starts killing the mood. So I take us back to the paintings and the sculptures and all that. And then we come across this. And we stare at this. This is sitting in the sculpture section. And eventually I say, wow, that is really great art. Mm. That is great art. And Kristen says, are you crazy? That's not great art. That's terrible art. What are you talking about? And uh, we argue back and forth about this. Great art, not great art. And eventually we realize that what we need to do is provide a definition for what we mean by great art. And so I say, what I mean by great art is something that was intended as art and was really influential on lots of future artists. Okay? And I, was it Kristen? Yeah. Okay, good. So, and then Kristen says, uh, well, what I mean by great art is something that was intended as art and is pleasing to most people. And look at this. We weren't even disagreeing at all. We thought we were disagreeing, but we were just completely talking past each other because we weren't clear about the meaning of our terms first. But now let's say we've resolved this, and we don't even disagree. In fact, we're probably both correct because uh, Marcel Duchamp's urinal, which you saw a moment ago, was very influential on future artists, uh, but it is probably not pleasing to most people. So we're actually both right. Uh, but we thought we were disagreeing when we really weren't. But let's say, you know, we were really worked up by this argument, and so we just decided to keep arguing. We just decided to keep going with this. And Kristen says, well, but my definition of great art is better than your definition. It's, it's a better definition. And I say, no, my definition is better. And Kristen says, well, but my definition is closer to what most people mean when they talk about great art. And I say, no, 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 you've got it all wrong. My definition is closer to what most people mean when they talk about great art. Because, I mean, think about it. The, all, there's lots of really ugly and dark and weird-looking pieces of art that are considered great art. And in fact, when you look at these lists that people make of the greatest artworks of all time, they're all really influential. So my definition of great art is the better <coughs> definition. And we argue back and forth about this for a while. And it turns out to be really hard to figure out how we would answer a question like that. I mean, we could look it up in a dictionary, but the dictionary is probably going to have a definition that's pretty close to Kristen's, and it's probably going to have a definition that's pretty close to mine, and they're probably going to have many different definitions, so that's really not going to solve the problem. And so what do we do? Um, it's really hard to say, and uh, it's really hard to say because I forgot what my next thing is. <laughs> Hold on one second.
All right. And so, in the end, it's really a practical question of how we want to use our word tools. Because remember, words are just tools that we use for communicating ideas with each other. There's no essential meaning to this sound great art. There's no essential meaning to that particular pattern of air going in and out of my orifices and my meat parts slapping together. There's no essential meaning to that. It's just we kind of all agree what generally we mean by great art, and we can use that to communicate with each other. But the problem arose because we didn't agree with enough precision about what we meant by great art, and so Kristen and I were thought we were disagreeing when we really weren't. Now, we don't have this problem in a really uh, robust science like physics because physicists agree to a really high degree of accuracy about what they mean about their terms. Like atoms, two physicists don't get confused when they're talking about atoms because there's a very specific definition for atom. But a lot of fields are more fuzzy than that. If you look at sociology and say we're talking about religion, what is a religion? Well, we kind of agree on what a religion is, but there's some fuzzy areas there. And so two sociologists might be talking about religion and be talking past each other, like Kristen and I were, about great art. But then eventually I think they'd figure out that what they need to do is they need to define you know, what they mean by religion and then we can go out into the world and measure if anything in the real world corresponds to that definition and what properties it has and all that kind of thing. But now some subjects, the subject matter is so diversely discussed that it's really hard to figure out what we mean by the terms. And think, this is like the great art dispute, right? What do we mean by great art? There's so many different definitions out there. And in fact, you know, you'll have debates with your friend about what was the best movie of the year? That's, I think there's a lot of talking past each other that happens at that point. And in, in fact, I, uh, I make lists of best movies of the year, and I don't even know what I mean by that. So it, there's a lot of confusion in some of these fields. And I think the same thing is happening in moral discourse. We've got this problem that there's so many different conceptions of morality that we're just talking past each other a lot of the time. You've got utilitarians like Sam Harris, who defines morally good as that which promotes the greatest good or the greatest uh, well-being for conscious creatures. You've got social contract theorists who might define morally good as that set of social rules we would agree to if we didn't know what kind of life we were going to be born into. You've got moral subjectivists who define morally good as that which the speaker approves of. You've got all these different moral theories, and I think we're talking past each other a lot of the time. So what's, what's the way forward? Um, it seems to be that the obvious thing we should do is to define our moral terms and then go out and see and measure if anything corresponds to those moral terms. Um, but even if we do that, notice that a lot of moral theories are still going to be just wrong. I mean, it's not that if we define our moral terms, we can just all be right. Because if you define morality in terms of uh, what is commanded by a deity, then nothing is morally right, because nothing is commanded by a deity. Or if you define moral value in terms of that which has intrinsic value, that could really be problematic too, because I've just never seen any evidence that anything has intrinsic value. And you might disagree with all of that, but there's a, there's a problem that even if we define our moral terms, a lot of moral theories are just going to be wrong out of the bat. Now, the other, other really interesting thing is that uh, if Kristen and I are debating the meaning of great art, or whether or not something is great art, I think it'll become clear really quickly that what we need to do is define our terms and then see who's right and wrong. Why don't we see that that's the way forward when we're talking about morality? I think there's two reasons, at least. The first one is, think about the purpose of moral discourse. The purpose of moral discourse, of uh, talking about what's right and wrong, is that you can influence others' behavior. And you can have more impact in doing that if you speak with as much authority as you can. <coughs> And so you say, it's just wrong to protect people who rape children. It's just wrong in every possible, absolute way, every reasonable definition of morality, it's just wrong. And especially when you speak like that to children, you can have a much greater impact because you've got all this authority that it's just wrong in every possible sense of the world and absolutely and no questions about it. Probably an even bigger reason that it's, it's not obvious that we just need to define our moral terms and then go out and measure stuff in the real world is that uh, evolutionarily we've been primed to feel really deeply that some things are really right and really wrong because that was adaptive for a social species. 
um, to think that physically murdering somebody is really wrong. And uh, you can see this in other animals as well, so we're not the only ones who have uh, evolved moral behavior. So those are some reasons why we just can't seem to, you know, we want morality to be just one thing according to every possible definition. Um, but that's just not the way language evolved in the case of morality. It's just not the way that language works. So what we need to do is the same thing in, as in the art.